Good afternoon and welcome to the Pavilion Gardens Buxton. It's Tuesday, April the 23rd, and we are open for view as you can see. It's a buzzy, busy and bustling room already. We've got plenty of cars here on offer and a huge range across from the um, Edwardian era, 1914 Ford Model T or 1915, sorry, Ford Model T, all the way through to 2014 BMW i8 modern hypercar sports car. So uh, great cross section. So in this first part of the hall, we've got a Triumph TR3 that was uh, for many years a loan car for the Hero and ERA, the Endurance Rally Association. So that's been well prepped for um, events. Still a solid beast and capable of taking on many more stages. Behind that, we've got an Alpine A110. And that again, most famous as a rally car in the 70s. Uh, they were all conquering really. Like a Porsche 911 rear engine, unlike a Porsche 911 fiberglass bodywork and very light. This particular car wears a Group 4 body kit, which is why it looks so aggressive with those massive bulging arches. And next to it, we've got the first of two big Heelys, a um, 3000 Mark III BJ8. And that is finished in the unusual and late color of gold metallic. So um, popular in period and enjoying something of a renaissance now. That car spent most of its life in America. It's come back, been converted to right-hand drive and used and enjoyed by the vendor for tours all over. We've also got a Porsche 912, and that is one of the first series cars. So it's on the short wheelbase, same as the contemporary 911, but with the cheaper to maintain four cylinder engine. And that again is a car that's undergone a fair amount of restoration. Although in terms of restoration, this minivan is absolutely lovely. As you can see, it's been really, really nicely gone through, restored, brought up to stand, and it's got a period tax disc in the window. It's been taken to plenty of shows, and that's been a proper, proper labor of love. Good to see it. As really as this GT6. Triumph's answer to the E-Type, if you like. Six cylinder engine, fastback styling, very, very pretty little cars, Michelotti styling, just gorgeous. This one has only recently emerged from extensive restoration. And indeed, next to it, another restored car, the second of the big Heelys, 3000 Mark II. Now, these were the first big Heelys to feature a proper, easy to operate convertible hood. They don't have the wooden dash of some of them. This particular car has undergone an extensive body off chassis up restoration with a huge number of new parts supplied by AH Spares. We're talking brakes, suspension, engine, gearbox, back axle, wiring, everything has been gone through at great expense and retrimmed. It's in a midnight blue, so it looks almost black with tan leather. And the vendor is very proud of the fact that he's had the carpeted, uh, boot carpeted in biscuit as well. So uh, it's a very, very, very smart car. Behind us, got a Lotus Esprit Turbo again. This is from the uh, Giugiaro era, pre Peter Stevens facelift. And these really were a supercar killer, or if you like, the four cylinder supercar of the time. The performance of that 2.2 litre turbocharged engine and the dynamics of the chassis meant this would give any Porsche or Ferrari a run for its money. Mentioned it earlier, but this is indeed the BMW i8. Still looks like a very futuristic design. Still glides around on electric power when you want it to. It's got that petrol hybrid motor, four wheel drive, very quick, very well balanced, but actually not over tired. They're on comparatively skinny tires for a car of this performance. So actually a lot more enjoyable to drive than you might anticipate. Uh, next to it, we've got a Ferrari 360 Spider. Now, these were the first of the truly all aluminium construction Ferraris, the same template they use to this day. You've got that normally aspirated 3.6 litre V8 engine, 400 odd brake horsepower. Got the F1 transmission. This car, believe it or not, is being offered for sale without reserve. So this will go to the highest bidder tomorrow. Next to it, one of a number of very, very low owner cars. This particular car has effectively had one driver from new and been in the same family ownership. So it's a 1983 Alfa Romeo GTV 2 litre. This was styled by Giorgetto Giugiaro, so great name behind it. 
It used the same drivetrain layout as Alfa Romeo's fabulous Alfetta Tipo 158 and 159 Grand Prix cars. So the gearbox is in unit with the back axle at the rear for weight distribution. And this particular car, it's done 47,500 warranted miles. It's always been babied and the interior is just incredible. For something with velour seats that's over 40 years old, that has never been restored, never been touched. It's got the fishnet headrests. It's just period perfect. First owner had it dinitrile treated from new. I've never seen one like it and I don't think I ever will again. And for the money, 16 to 20,000 pounds, you couldn't restore that car for that kind of money. So it's just gorgeous. Equally gorgeous, but needing work, is this Lancia Flaminia GT. Now these were very, very nicely engineered cars. You've got the 2.8 litre V6 with the Weber carburettors. This one, yes, it needs work. It needs a full repaint, but coming from passionate ownership, you can see various period stickers in the rear windscreen for uh, private aircraft and pilots association. And uh, yeah, elegant touring coach work, just wonderful. Next to it, Jensen Interceptor Series 3, uh, currently owned by a multiple award winning and just won a BAFTA actor. Uh, this one is lovely because it has the original interior. That has never been restored. That is the original red leather upholstery. So it has been repainted over time, but it's a low mileage car with that blood red interior. It's really quite dramatic. Next to that, we have a Bentley T-Series. Now, weirdly enough, in the mid late 60s into the early 70s, and in fact, all the way through to the 80s, Bentley was a sister brand to Rolls-Royce and it was completely outsold by Rolls-Royce. So there were 11 times as many Silver Shadows sold as Bentley T-Series. This particular car was built to special order. It's finished in this fabulous large green metallic, which you very, very rarely see. It is by and large the original paint. It has been polished through in a couple of areas, but it's got a great feel to it. Somebody spent a lot of money on the car, so the rubbers have all been replaced. This thing doesn't mist up, it doesn't leak. It's had new tires, it's had quite a lot of work done to it. Next to it, a uh, Range Rover. Now this is one of the LSE, the long wheelbase cars. It's a soft dash. So there are only, I think, 375 of these known to the soft dash register. And this car, again, was first registered to Land Rover as a demonstrator, which is why it's so highly optioned. So you've got this Niagara gray paintwork, which is rare in itself. Very few of these were finished like that. You've got the Brooklyn's body kit, which was factory fitted. And this particular car spent time in the collection of Trevor Leggett. Now Trevor had no fewer than 28 Range Rovers at one stage and his own in-house team to maintain and improve them. And this car has certainly benefited from that work. We have a plethora of E-types on offer. This car will appeal the most to some because it has been owned by a father and son from new. It's done 54,000 miles. This is the original russet leather interior. Car has been repainted, but the vendor vividly remembers being taken to school in this car on several occasions when he was perched on this little rear shelf and then going on continental holidays in the 80s in it. Uh, it's just a very, very much loved part of the family, but the seller's now got to the stage where he's not using it. It's garaged in a different county, so he'd like to move it on. So a second family could use and enjoy it, but uh, a great thing, desirable manual gearbox. Again, the guide price 45 to 55, it's not an expensive car in today's market. Next to that, we have a Series 1 3.8 fixed head. Now that car had a lot of restoration work 20 something years ago and has been garaged pretty much since then. It is on offer at no reserve, so it will require recommissioning, but it's got the makings of a great car. And again, no reserve, so the highest bid on the day will take it. As well as the E-types, we've got some traditional coach-built cars. So we have this 2025 three-position drop head. This particular car started life as a Park Ward saloon. It's been rebodied, but beautifully, beautifully done by a gentleman called Roger Charlton. It's even got bespoke kick plates made with the, uh, the Charlton name on them. 
And uh, as you can see, I mean, the detailing is just exquisite. All this Art Deco sort of period door furniture. These timbers are a single piece that's been crafted and sculpted to make that. So this car, unsurprisingly, in its past has won uh, awards at the Rolls-Royce Enthusiast Club events and uh, just a fabulous, fabulous thing in that very dramatic color scheme. Next to it, a real rarity. Okay, this is not the smartest example, but this is one of nine Bentley R-types that were bodied by Park Ward to design 552 as a drop head coupe. So rare as hen's teeth. Uh, it was supplied new to the proprietor of a knitwear company uh, who had various patents to his credit. And it was later owned by uh, the uh, well-known car collector and entrepreneur, Peter de Savary, part of his collection and his museum. The current uh, deceased owner uh, had a very large collection and used to make some of the cars earn their keep by loaning them for TV and film work. So this has been on the big and little screens in various configurations. Uh, it does now require a bare metal repaint, but has been running and driving here at the sale. And again, the guide price at 30 to 40,000, that's very inexpensive. If that car was in beautiful order, it would be 100,000 plus. So plenty of scope there for somebody to improve. Next to it, we have a BMW 502. Now, these are a real, real rarity, especially in right-hand drive and being supplied new to the UK, because sadly, this is sufficiently close to the end of World War II when owning a German car was a little bit of a stigma here in the UK. So these were nicely engineered. The, uh, the so-called Baroque angel in terms of the styling, really quite voluptuous and flowing. Uh, unusual in that they are powered by a 2.6 litre V8 engine, BMW's first V8. And uh, again, this one's got much of its original red velour interior. So uh, yeah, whether or not you need sunglasses in there, but it's, uh, it's a great fun thing. Uh, current owners used it to go to things like the Goodwood Revival in the period car park and that sort of thing. Next to it, uh, no less eye-catching, this Vauxhall, which as you can see, has got a very dramatic red and green colour scheme. And uh, just nice to have seen it survive through to the current day, because what was once a very popular, strong selling vehicle, now they're very, very few far in between. So. Um, Next to it, we have a Bristol 403. And you can see the influence that BMW had on Bristol. I mean, if you look at the grille design of the 502 and the 403, you can see they are related. And indeed, the engine in this was a BMW design that was taken by Bristol as part of war reparations. Very aerodynamic because Bristol cars evolved from Bristol, the aircraft company, just very, very nicely engineered and very advanced for their day. Still a rewarding, fun thing to drive. Next to it, we have a 1915 Ford Model T. Now this is unusual because it was built in Manchester, Trafford Park. We believe it spent most of its life as a taxi and uh, it was first registered in York or that number of places from York. Again, this car is from the same collection as the Bentley R-Type drop head. So this car, we believe, has featured in War Horse, as well as Mr. Selfridge, Downton Abbey, Peaky Blinders, you name it. Having the colour change, depending on what the production crew wanted out of it. But we're fortunate enough to speak to Neil Tuckett of Tuckett Brothers about this car. And uh, he speaks of it very highly. And has said he's quite happy to help a new owner um, show them some paperwork and all sorts of other bits and pieces. Next to that, we have a Suffolk SS100. Now those are a beautiful evocation of the Jaguar SS100, which was arguably one of the most stylish sports cars of the 1930s. Not to mention a rally winner. This particular example was built by the Suffolk factory, uh, built to a high standard, nicely trimmed, nicely specified. So a lovely, lovely thing. I got a MGA Roadster that's been uprated for more modern road conditions with an MGB engine, giving it slightly longer legs. Next to all of this, we have the Ballard Special, which is not one, but two Ford Model A engines geared in series. So acting as a straight eight. Really, really, really nice thing. Fabulous bit of engineering. It's been shown in Europe 
won various awards, just a great thing. We've got a great selection of modern classics in this auction, as we have in most of the sales. So we've got everything from a Mitsubishi GTO, now that's being offered for sale without reserve. Very, very technologically advanced car for the day. Three litre V6 twin turbo, four wheel drive, four wheel steering, you name it, active suspension. Uh, a lot of technology that really is only now becoming commonplace on designs like a Porsche 992. So way, way ahead of its time. That particular example, no reserve, as you can see, needs some work, but potentially rewarding project. Next to it, a couple of more modern Mercedes coupes. Uh, I've got a 500 there and a CLK 230 compressor. Now, amazingly, that black CLK has done 14,000 miles from new. Uh, offered for sale without reserve. You know, it's a huge amount of car for the money and uh, really, really well looked after. So complete jump back in time when you get into the interior of that one. Through into the first of the marquees, we've got, again, mainly soft tops in here. Uh, there's a Ford GPD. W being a Jeep being off and sell without reserve. Um, again, a wee bit, a wee bit on the scruffy side, but do you really want your Jeep, Jeep pristine? So, uh, so that maybe you could got one of uh, bit some. Ford's Evergreen XR2 Fiestas. That car's created a huge amount of attention ever since it turned up on Monday. So uh, a lot there. I've got the Marcos GT, which still looks impossibly low slung you know a 60s design but wonderful uh, next to it we've got 1967 mgb roadster now that particular car was seriously operated by Orselli uh, in 2003 so i think the conversion then cost 15 16 pounds it's got a stage two engine in it it's got operator suspension brakes better seats and to be fair it's lasted very very well Next to it, we've got a Honda S2000 GT. Now, the S2000 was Honda's 40th birthday present to itself. A proper old-fashioned sports car. Front, en front engine, rear-wheel drive. Now, the engine on one of these will rev to over 8,000 RPM. They were the most powerful, naturally aspirated engine in terms of specific output per litre of anything you could buy at the time. Six-speed gearbox, great, great fun. Does say. If you really like open air thrills, we've got a beach buggy. Uh, this one, uh, bit date from 1967, uh, obviously more modern when it was converted into a beach buggy, uh, guided at nine to 11,000, just huge amounts of fun. If you want something that's gonna put a smile on your face and the smile of, on the faces of anybody who sees you in it, that's the beach buggy. Have here a rare twist on the Jaguar Mark II, um, not only because it's the Daimler version, but it's a manual car. Now, these are rare. I believe they made something in the region, I might be very wrong, but something in the region of, is it only 500 manual cars? So it is a rare, rare thing indeed. That's got its original interior, uh, runs sweetly. Yeah, just a nice, nice period piece. But uh, the Daimler V8 was rather lighter than the Jaguar Straight 6. So these are a little bit more nimble to drive. Two more modern performance classics. So we've got one of the hot Megans uh, from a time when Renault F1 was running as Renault F1 rather than Alpine. These are a great alternative to a Golf of the same period. Huge fun to drive. Great, great value for money. I mean, this one's what, five to seven thousand pounds. I think it's done 60 something thousand miles, been well looked after. Next to it, we have a Subaru come down from us from a chap in northern Scotland. He drove it all the way down. Uh, this car has a ridiculous service history. He's owned it from new. Uh, he bought it while stationed in Dubai, I believe, and uh, he's babied it all the way through its life. So it is left-hand drive, um, 10 to 12,000, which given the service history and the condition is not expensive. This is my colleague Lucas's favorite vehicle in the sale, the little Austin a35 van so uh, and you can see why they are just so so cute so um, this one had a few little bits of customization over time I believe it comes with quite a few parts for or bills for new parts and that sort of thing and uh, comes with a not period but uh, 
still rather old camel ashtray. Haven't seen one of those for a while. <laughs> so, uh, and a rev counter and all sorts of other goodies. But uh, again, great fun and something that would be very much welcomed if you rocked up a Goodwood in it. The second marquee has got some real treasures in it. So we have here uh, any Jensen Interceptor SP is a rare creature, but this was the sole demonstrator built for 1972. So it is one of one. Um, yes, it does need a lot of work, but if you look around it, you can see it is surprisingly solid. It comes with uh, copies of its build records to verify the provenance. You've got the original engine, you've got a spare engine, so uh, you can bring this back to its former glory. And again, that. You know, we've got 60, 70,000 pounds for these when they're well done. So this one, 2025, there is scope to bring it back to life and improve it. And at the time, you know, in the early 70s, these were about the most powerful thing you could buy. So they had more power than uh, a Lamborghini Countach. They had more power than a Ferrari Daytona. Big, big, big Chrysler V8 engine with the SP, the six pack, the triple carbs, two throats per carb, six throats, six pack. Next to it is a Rover P6. Uh, and this, yeah, okay, it's the, the 2.2 version with an automatic gearbox, but it is incredibly well looked after. Um, you can just see it's a very, very original, unmessed with, well-preserved car. So I'll see if I can get into the bonnet for you. Yeah, that but mm. I tend to put the bonnet releases for these in the glove box. Uh, so if you Hello? aren't familiar with that, you're going to spend a long time struggling. Probably not as long as I'm going to spend struggling to open it. Well, I can make this. There we go. But I think you can get a measure for how well looked after that car's been. I mean, there are very few cars here today with that kind of engine bay. Um, very few cars full stop. So uh, something that has been loved and cherished and looked after. Yeah, ben. Again, just a great cross section. So we've got a Bullnose Morris. Um, these are such a characterful thing. They've still got a strong following well over a hundred years after, well, not quite. They've carried on till 1926, I think the Bullnose. So this is a late one and then went into flat nose, but you know, getting on for a hundred years since these were last built, uh, they still retain quite a lot of affection for people. Um, we've got a AC, one of the six cylinder cars, early six cylinder cars. So that was the um, John uh, Weller designed engine, I think that carried on all the way through to the 1960s, um, all alloy straight six overhead cam. Uh, next to that, the flat nose successor to the bull nose. And this one's unusual because it was converted in period into a pickup for a cider company. So I presume this would have been filled with bottles of cider or many, many apples, but uh, you know, great fun, Lot, lots of fun. Uh, next to it, we've got a time warp, another time warp. This traveler has done, I think it's, I can't remember, 17,000 miles or something crazy low. Let's have a look. Oh, I've got that wrong. 7,000. <laughs> 7,000. So, I mean, that really is go find another. Um, lot of interest in it. Again, you know, that's with the Farina styling, the stylish looking thing, usable, although arguably a bit of a crime to use this, given how low mileage it has, but uh, just period perfect. Pagoda Mercedes, another no reserve car, uh, Jaguar XJS. So, uh, you know, work to bring it back to its former glory, but surely worth it. Uh, example of the evergreen and very popular Ford Capri. Uh, that's, I think, a warranted 50 something thousand miles from new, low owners, original book pack, documented all the way through. So great fun. But hopefully, as you can see, it is a wonderful selection of cars. We carry on being open for view today until six o'clock. Then we're open from 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, which is Wednesday the 24th. The auction itself will start at one o'clock. Your 
very, very welcome to come down and attend in person. We'd love to see you and bid live in the room, or you can register for a telephone bid, or you can register for internet bidding. Please bear in mind that for internet bidding, there is a 1% surcharge. Uh, but any which way you'd like to join in with the auction, if you have any questions, any anything, please don't hesitate to contact us on 01925-210-035 or via email info at handh.co.uk. But hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.